Well, the initial idea of Gremlins was not mine. Uh, it came from Chris Columbus, who was a writer uh, who wanted to uh, uh, send out a spec script. Um, Roald Dahl wrote a book uh, that was in the 40s that Walt Disney almost made into an animated feature called Gremlins. Uh, and uh, some of that ends up in our movie. One of the characters talks about that particular version of Gremlins. But as far as the designs go, um, Chris really drew uh, pretty much the, what the Gremlins looked like in his script. And uh, w when we hired Chris Wallace and his crew to realize them, uh, they actually um, uh, copied basically um, uh, Chris's designs. When it came to the pre-Gremlin stage, the Mogwai, uh, those little fuzzy creatures, that was a little bit more uh, vague. They, they kind of were described as little teddy bears, and um, we did do a lot of research uh, and, uh, and development trying to figure out what to make them uh, look like, and all of which, of course, had to be approved by Steven Spielberg. So um, to speed the process along, we decided to base our designs on his Cocker Spaniel, uh, which uh, had the same color as uh, what became the Mogwai. And uh, he went for that, which was great. And so we built little Mogwai puppets, and um, the only downside came when, about three weeks before we were going to shoot the movie, uh, Stephen decided that he liked the Mogwai so much, and particularly Gizmo, the lead Mogwai, that uh, he wanted them to stick around for the entire movie. That all the other Mogwai could turn into Gromos, but, but uh, Gizmo had to stay uh, a Mogwai through the whole picture, and um, we were completely unprepared to do that. We only had enough um, design and, 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 and stuff to make him palatable for about a half an hour, and, and now suddenly he was going to become the star of the movie, so we had to scramble to figure out a way to um, upgrade the puppet so that it could look like it could be the star of the movie. And uh, it, was, it, was all, it was pretty frantic, but we did manage to build a gigantic head that we were able to photograph and get some uh, subtle expressions out of. And, we, and as we went along, we learned a little bit more about how to uh, manipulate the puppets. And so ultimately, it, uh, it turned out to be a good idea. Well, the nasty gremlins were not that difficult to do because they were bigger. And uh, they, each, each gremlin had a certain number of people assigned to it in order to manipulate it. It was done through wires and animatronics, all of which were uh, hidden underground or behind props or behind chairs, uh, which made it very difficult because anytime you wanted to use a gremlin, you had to make sure that you couldn't see the puppeteer. So we built the sets up on stilts, and we had a little army of puppeteers uh, under, underground, underneath the sets, with little video monitors, and uh, manipulating um, the, uh, the puppets, and uh, which... which Occasionally it would look better if you shot them in fast motion or slow motion. We, we had to do a lot of tests to figure that out. The, the Mogwai, the little gremlins, were obviously harder because they're, there's a lot of gears to pack into such a small amount of space. And um, so they were constantly breaking down. I, I think the major frustration in the movie was that you would finally get a scene going and then something would break and you'd have to stop and, and, uh, and wait for it to be fixed. Uh, one day, I, I remember... The production manager from Warner Brothers came to the set and the entire crew was sound asleep on the set because they'd been waiting for about four hours for the gremlin to be fixed. And uh, it didn't really, um, it wasn't a very good advertisement for our uh, momentum. Well, CGI didn't come along until well after we were finished making Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Uh, I, uh, I think CGI is a great invention. Uh, I think it's good for a lot of things. I, don't, I think people are unaware how much CGI there is in normal movies that they see. There's creating backgrounds and creating uh, mundane things that you assume are really there. Uh, it, they only really notice it when you do something fantastical. But uh, in the case of, of Gremlins, I think we were doing a sort of a, a, a state-of-the-art puppet movie. And um, we, our job would have made trem been made tremendously easier if CGI had existed because the puppeteers, instead of being hidden around corners, manipulating from afar, could actually have been very close to the puppets and working them in a much more subtle way. And then with CGI, we could take them out of the frame, just replace the background. So my, my view is that uh, the two techniques work well together and uh, one can... Um, uh, improve the other in terms of uh, working conditions. So uh, I think it's really the best of both worlds. I, I think that to replace all animatronics with 
all CGI is very limiting and probably not a good idea. The puppets from Gremlins tended to uh, fall apart under great stress. Uh, we would go through a lot of them uh, when we were actually making the films, and um, they don't uh, react particularly well to air. So anybody who has uh, tried to preserve uh, a Gremlin puppet has generally put, the, put it in lucite uh, to try to keep the air away from it, because the, the kind of rubber that the Gremlins are made of uh, just tends to fall apart. Uh, so there are there are some people who have original gremlins. Um, there are a, a few. I know Forrest J. Ackerman had one in his uh, his famous Monsters Museum, which never happened. Um, and there are there are a number of them scattered about. Uh, Rick Baker, I think, still has some. But um, in general, the uh, they 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 are mostly gone. Uh, however, uh, because of the popularity of the movie, particularly in Japan. Um, there is a series of uh, very uh, detailed models that have been sold over the internet and elsewhere, um, which are very good replicas of uh, the way that they actually looked and um, in both pictures, because the, they're, they're subtly different in Gromans 1 and Gromans 2. Um, so I, I think if you're, if you're interested in owning uh, a Gromans or a Magwai, I think the, the way to go is to get online. Well, the, the design of Gizmo wasn't really affected by cartoons, but the, 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 his movements were. Uh, there, uh, there's a cartoon that Chuck Jones did called Feed the Kitty, which is about a dog and a little kitten that comes into his life and how he initially doesn't like it and then he sort of falls for it. And it's adorably cute. And, and there's a, a scene where the cat gets in a uh, little toy car and zooms around. And that was the inspiration for the scene at the end of Grumman's in the department store where Gizmo gets into a... Uh, uh, a car and drives around and um, knocks over things, and it's very, very similar to the um, to the cartoon, which at one point was seen on a TV in the movie, but then I think we switched out and put something else up. Oh, we uh, we put a Clark Gable movie up instead of a, a, a car racing movie because it allowed us to use a dialogue line. Well, my favorite movie monster period would be The Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I think is one of the great monster designs of all time. Um, the, of the past several years, gosh, I would have to think of what monsters there really were in the past several years. I, I, I wasn't a big fan of the um, kind of CGI dinosaur monster things that are going on now. I, I, they don't seem to have faces for me. They don't, they don't, I, can't, I can't read what their emotions are. Um, there's a lot of monsters in Cabin in the Woods, but uh, they're not uh, specifically designated as, as characters, so that's not fair. Um, golly, I, I, I can't think of uh, my favorite monster from the last couple of years, because I, I really haven't thought that there have been that many monsters. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, Pinhead and, you know, uh, Hellraiser, those kind of characters, but um, they're, they're all from a different era, so I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure what I would say to them.